Hey everyone, this is Kevin, the Aspie on YouTube, and I know we've been having a lot of fun going on various dates with Katie, but I want to talk about something that is seemingly insignificant, and yet somehow it is very important, because this channel was created to express what it's like living with Asperger's Syndrome, and while I was rummaging through some boxes, I stumbled across a box of VHS tapes that I have decided to keep, and immediately a flood of memories came back so I remember where I was when I got those tapes, why I kept them, and I figured it's probably important to talk to you guys about it because something about people with Asperger's is that they are very nostalgic people. Uh, just the other day we were talking to some friends and, you know, my girlfriend and um, the question came up, if you could have one year to live forever, what would it be? And there are varying degrees and this was a question I didn't hesitate once. I said 1996. I, I don't know why, but everything just seemed to be nostalgic childhood bliss that year. I remember that year. I liked what was on TV. I liked my friends. There were no major hardships. I liked the movies that were coming out. I liked, I finally got my Sega Genesis and, I, and Saturn and I was uh, enjoying them. And I even liked the New Year's Eve party, so much so that the next day after the New Year's Eve party was over, I wished that the whole year could just move over again. I can't do that, of course, but that just kind of goes to show how nostalgic people are. And there's certain things that we fall in love with as kids that always resonate even when we become adults. I'm 33 years old now. I, uh, I've definitely moved beyond what is expected for most of these shows, and yet I have kept some VHS tapes. And these VHS tapes hold no value whatsoever. Um, <laughs> you can easily get any of these on DVD, and yet I keep them for very specific nostalgic memories. Now I'm going to separate the videos, and today we're just going to talk about the anime tapes, although there's a cheat in there, and we're going to explain why I've kept them. Now, <laughs> the first thing I want to point out is I wanted this. I kept the Sailor Moon S Hotrider Secret Sailor Moon S, and. Um, I did that, bought this because um, at the time I was actually buying Sailor Moon on DVD and enjoying the Japanese version and I just wanted to see what the edited version looked like because for the first couple seasons of the show when Deke was dubbing it, they were replacing the music with American music and while I do believe the Japanese music is vastly superior, I did grow up on the English music and it's good in its own right. So I wanted to see if they would put it into the edited, and it didn't, and I guess I kind of wanted to keep this to remind myself that, um, you know, the deep dub days were truly over, and it was way cheaper to keep the, <laughs> the Japanese music than to do the English music, I guess so. Also, I just love Sailor Moon, so I decided to keep that. Um, I... I'm going to be an angel. Now, this I kept because this is kind of a unique one. This was released by Sync Point, and I believe this was the only VHS of the show they ever made. Uh, I could be wrong, but I, there might have been a second VHS, but I remember this was like going to be their big flagship project, and they released one tape, maybe two, and then it fell apart. They went out of business shortly afterwards, and... I remember buying the first tape, never found another one, and it's kind of just been a reminder to one day finish this, even though I might not enjoy the show much anymore. Now, these next two tapes I'm going to show together because they're kind of one and the same, but they're Card Captor Sakura VHS tapes. Now, these were the subtitled, um, <laughs> you know, versions, not the Card Captor stuff, which is all for the better. This was one of the first times that I truly realized just how bad an English dub could be. Because I remember me and my friend Zach, we turned on Kids WB, we watched it, and Card Captors, and did not understand it at all, did not like it. Someone told me I needed to check out the subtitled Card Captor Sakura. Well, when the tapes came out, we weren't quite buying DVD yet, so I picked them up, and yeah, they were a lot better. And, uh,. So, and I just like this artwork now. I truly don't need these anymore because Card Captor Sacker has been re-released on Blu-ray and I will get it at some point and I will probably watch it with my own kids, but you know, that just, that's a reminder when I discovered it. 
Now, this one I kept because I don't think I'm ever going to see it again. Magical Project S, otherwise known as Pretty Sammy. Uh, this was a spinoff of Tenchi Moyo, and unlike the um, Tenchi Moyo TV series, this was a more kid-friendly version. It features Sasami as a superhero, Sailor Moon type superhero, you know, all that jazz. And she would fight evil, and Tenchi was like the love interest for her, and I, I hear this did so poorly that, that act stores would not touch the Pretty Sammy name, so they had to change it to Magical Project S, and it still didn't take. In fact, if you look, it says subtitled in English. Now, English subtitled anime wasn't exactly rare back then. Like, most companies had a subtitled version of a hit show. They usually cost more money and had less episodes, but, you know, they had them. But this was so bad, they sold so poorly that they never made a dub, as far as I'm aware, and they never bothered to try to release on DVD. Even Funimation, who has since gotten the Tenchi Moyo rights, does not seem interested in ever releasing Pretty Sammy or Magical Project S. So I will probably never see this again, and that's kind of why I kept that one. Now, it's probably obvious why I kept this, but My Neighbor Totoro, I mean, this is my introduction to Hayao Miyazaki, and it, the funny thing is, I remember when I was a kid, I wasn't even the one who rented this. My brother Victor rented this, and I remember seeing the cover, and it was like, I don't know what to make of that. Um, but we watched it, we both loved it, and then we had um, an exchange student, a Japanese exchange student named Kena, and she bought it, and you know, so we watched it several times with her. Uh, and so I, I think I kept this for two reasons. One, this was my introduction to um, to Miyazaki, but also I actually have distinctive memories of watching this not only with Kana, but with my mom. And I just I just have good memories watching this tape, so I kept it. I don't know what else to say. Uh, now these next set of tapes are were saved for a very specific reason. They were saved because I actually got them cheap in Japan. Like, I found a VHS of Slam Dunk, which is a show I like that has never caught on America, but I believe you can stream it on Hulu and Crunchyroll. I also got Princess Mononoke, which I have to admit, I love, 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 love this box art. I mean, just look at that. That is super impressive. And inside, I don't know what this says, but, uh, it's uh, very atmospheric. Also, I got this really weird Pokemon tape that seems to have something to do with the card game, and did I ever look inside? Oh, shoot. I actually, it's just on me, I have never opened this before. And yeah, there's advertisements for the trading card. Um, there's, what is, what is this? Just, I should probably do a proper unboxing video. And we have this, whatever the heck it is. Uh, <laughs> so uh, that's a cool label also, by the way. Just, just look at that. Look at that. So anyway, maybe I'll look at this. Maybe I should look up to see what this is. If anyone knows what it is, let me know below. and I'll make a separate video on it. Also, we have this, which I, again, don't know what this is, but I got it in Japan. And I got a lot of trinkets in Japan, but, and I never really got rid of too many of them. Like I, I actually saved like pointless ads and stuff that people handed me on the street. And one more thing I got from Japan, now this is not anime, this is Disney's Aladdin, but I just wanted to show you just how different the cover is compared to the American VHS. If any of you, remembers what the VHS for Aladdin looked like it uh, was a little bit more colorful than this although the back of the box is more or less the same now the last one I'm gonna show you and this actually has the most nostalgia for me for some reason but uh Sailor Moon the Doom Tree Saga now this as you can see is brand new it has never been opened and that's gonna be important in a moment now to describe this VHS it should be noted that this was a very risky endeavor by Deke Entertainment. Sailor Moon had become pretty popular. It didn't really hit on syndication, but 
on VHS it was rented a lot and people were buying tapes and Deke decided they would try essentially a season box set. So they took the 13 episode Doom Tree series arc, which is also the alien arc from the Sailor Moon R season, and released them on four tapes. And the thing retailed for $50. Now, considering the two episode VHSs retailed for $15, that was a pretty good deal. But it, that was a lot of money for a kid back then. Like, I, I don't know what kids do to make money now. But I remember getting like $2 a week and you really had to save for this. And so I saved, I saved, I finally got it. And in that time, I had managed to see these episodes on TV while I was in New Jersey, staying with my Aunt Mary because New Jersey, a local station, aired reruns of the first 65 episodes of Sailor Moon for years. Like um, when the Sailor Moon license ran out, there was a station in New Jersey the Egg Harbor Town, where Sailor Moon was still airing at 6.30 in the morning until the last day that they absolutely could not air it anymore. That's how popular it was over there, at least it seems to be, or maybe this was inexpensive, I don't know. But, so I saw the episodes and I bought it and I just never opened it. And one of the, the reason that ended up being very important to me is on the back you can see there is a sticker. Now, some of you might actually know what that is, but that is a Suncoast video sticker, which was a VHS store. They also had this label for like Sam Goody and Media Play, and uh, the Media Play wasn't where I live, but it was in New York, so my Uncle Ning would always treat me to that whenever I would go visit. But I left that on, so when I see this, it's a reminder of, I'm kind of almost transported back into the Suncoast video. I remember like the black walls, the lanes, the TVs that would play stuff, I it was just wonderful. Now, sadly, some of it's kind of opening up and maybe the plastic won't last forever. I'm actually kind of careful about how I store this now. And for some reason, this just transports me back to being a kid in Suncoast Video, and it seems silly. It really does. I mean, I know logically that does not make a whole lot of sense. But for someone who has Asperger's and has some very strong memories, memories that I'm attached to and remember fondly, um, it just kind of brings it back. So th so I, I don't know if I'm ever going to get rid of this. Um, that would be a tough pill to swallow, even though I clearly don't need it. Heck, my Blu-ray has all of these episodes and then some, and they're better dubbed anyway, so... But anyway, those are my anime VHS collections. Now, I do have other VHS tapes, not as many, but there is one specific tape that I do want to show you guys in the future, and it might be on this channel, it might be on another. I haven't decided yet, but I will let you know when the time comes. In the meantime, you may comment below, you can share this if you'd like. I would love to know, what are do you guys keep any VHS tapes, and which ones have you kept and why? Please let me know below, and again, like, favorite, share the video. Subscribe if you haven't, and if you like the content I make, this channel is not monetized, so consider becoming a Patreon member for one dollar a month. It would help make more videos like this. And as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one.